I coached a student from 2.30 to 2.63 in two weeks. Initially, she panicked every time she hit a question she didn't recognize, and months of grinding UWorld wasn't helping. Then, one coaching session changed everything, and what it took was the last thing most people think of, but is actually the genius move that every 260 plus score finds eventually. Here is the private coaching call that unlocked everything for her, and how you can replicate it to break through your own plateau. What was your last NBME score? 231. I think I put okay. it. Down. So it's probably an interpretation. So it's probably more interpretation. I'm going to make some working assumptions. It doesn't mean that like we can't change them based off of what it is that I see. Uh, but for, for at least our first session, and again, this is going to lead into our second session. Um, I'm going to use these because I've just done this for a really long time. And so in general, when people are scoring like 200s, 210s, generally it's more knowledge than interpretation. So what it is you should spend your day doing as a consequence is going to be more towards like making sure that you get that 80%, make sure that you like, you know, cover as many of the 80% sort of subjects as you can. So I'm going to guess. So in general, if you're in like the 230s, 240s, generally it's more of an interpretation issue. That's not to say that you don't have knowledge problems, right? Everyone has things that they could learn. Even the questions that are interpretation problems, obviously, like there's still things that had you known that thing, it could have increased your likelihood. So there's still knowledge. Like it's not like it's 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 binary. It's like either or. But I will say that a larger percentage of the reason that you're missing questions is going to be more because of interpretation. That's relevant because it tells me what it is that you should be doing with your day, right? Because like. I don't want to give you a generic answer of like, oh yeah, just do like this, 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 this. Kind of like the the generic like, oh, just do 120 euro questions a day and like it'll be fine. Like it's 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 more nuanced because we got to figure out what the actual problem is that we're trying to solve. But I'm gonna guess that it's it's probably interpretation. Okay, so uh, September 3rd means like you've only got a couple, couple weeks. I would be doing mainly mixed questions, CMS and NBME. Okay. And your focus is on QI. Now, master CHF, continue doing videos on CHF, we should move on. Right. So in the subtopics, like I've only done properly CAB and CHF. And that's okay. Like, can you get 80% in a day or two? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, got that. Mm -hmm. in, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Perfect. But I mean, so, most of my days are going to review in the NBME. So then I'm like, oh, I, darn, I, wouldn't that's spend, I wouldn't review your NBME. So that's oh. the thing. So I would not review much of the NBME. Okay. Largely because the NBME, so I know, I know that sounds crazy because like the NBME writes the tests. People have probably told you like, I don't know, there's a lot of different advice out there. Because like, you know, in my opinion though, and again, this is just, I'll take this with a grain of salt, but in my experience, the NBME writes fantastic questions. They write the worst explanations. Yes. In all forms of learning, right, getting immediate feedback is the best. And so the problem is, is that if you're spending 70% of your day on NVMe review, that means that you took your NVMe like however long ago, right? And you're just like still like working through the NVMe. That's not great because it means that like the mistake that you made is now getting further and further away from when it is that you're reviewing that mistake. When you get questions wrong, how often is it that you were between two answer choices and then you you were like, I don't know, this seems right, but like, I don't know, there's something that doesn't quite feel right. And then I, I'm going to, that can't be right. And then you choose the other one. 60% of the time. 70%. Okay, so pretty common. So that's a problem of being the lawyer, not the judge. So let's look at this one. If you're serious about maximizing your scores, join our 14 day mini course now. We'll send you 14 high yield videos that break down the exact concepts and test strategies our students use for 260 plus scores. Click the link in the description below now to get instant access. Lower abdominal tenderness, multiple cholesterol emboli syndrome. Okay, great. So what was your thought process for choosing systemic necrotizing vasculitis? The silliest thing, because I thought that cholesterol embolism was like one or two manifestations. I'm like, this is way too systemic. It's affecting the kidneys. It's affecting the skin. It's too much, too much stuff. It has to be systemic. But I'm but we, too. Like, of course. But we were thinking like, oh, okay, this is probably like cholesterol embolism syndrome initially. Right, right. And then I'm like, okay, now, but they're having all these complications now and the dissection. I'm like, there has to be something bigger. Than just emboli, a cholesterol emboli. Those are like little tiny crystals. Can't be. Perfect. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's a pretty classic, like you were the lawyer, not the judge. Right. Because you were like, this sounds like cholesterol embolism because of, you know, like I was already kind of thinking that, but like, this doesn't seem like the, my, my sort of idealized picture of what cholesterol embolism syndrome looks like. Post, post, uh, uh, like a manipulation, like a catheter or something. They're having exactly. a dissection. Exactly. But the little manipulation of the root of the plaque. Yeah. Like there was, there was a student not too long ago who like, it was a question about shock and it was like, it was, it, they had septic shock. It was like, they had a fever. They had like other kind of classic signs of septic shock, but their extremities were cold, which as we know, mm -hmm. is not classic, right? Because it's distributive mm -hmm. shock. And so you get vasodilation. Yeah. Of one right, so it's a little weird. And they knew that and they were like, well, I don't know. Yeah, this can't be septic shock because like their extremities were. But it was septic shock. And so they 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 chose like tamponade because like tamponade was like a form of shock that they were like, yeah, I mean like the extremities would be cold for this one. So you know that, that must be right. In other words, they were the lawyer, not the judge, because like nothing else with tamponade. Like, because they had a fever. They had like, you know, all this other stuff that was like, you know, they had a source of an infection. There was this other stuff that just made it much more likely that it was it was septic shock. So for step one. Everything is going to kind of fit together into this nice, like, bow wrapped present. <laughs> For step two, it's not like that. So, I, we had one student, she went from 225 to 257 in two weeks, and she had your exact problem. So, I'm going to tell you what I told her, and I'm going to have you do that. And then we're going to, we're going to practice this a lot. So, in general, when you're the lawyer, not, you're not the judge. Oftentimes, you'll get stuck in the 220s, 230s range, maybe 240s. Right? She was stuck in the 220s, or it was, it was like 225. The way to overcome it is two things. First, you got to work on your, your, your expectation. You're expecting it to be perfect, maybe consciously, maybe subconsciously. But your expectation is actually the thing that's hurting you right now. Because maybe it's because you've had a, you know, a bad go with standardized tests in the past. Maybe it's because you are driven by your insecurities and doubts and feelings of like, you're not good enough. Yeah. And so like when you see, yeah, okay. I, 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 I say this cause like that, that, that was like me for most of my life. Um, there is like a, when that happens, the problem is, is that when you have like any sort of doubt kind of creep in, it's like, it confirms all of those feelings of inadequacy that you have. And then it's like, it triggers I don't know, like fight, or fight response or something, but you like run away from the correct answer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so the key is, is that you have to first know that that's happening and B, just don't do that, right? You have to change your expectation. I would argue that this is the equivalent. Like when you, when you feel that doubt of like, oh my gosh, I don't know, like this one seems right, but it's not a hundred percent correct. Like you should look at that as like, instead of being like, oh my gosh, what's wrong, right? Because if you if you looked at the, the physical like strain of working out and being like, oh my gosh, like this is awful. I can't do this. There's something wrong with me. Like you would never get better at this. Like you would, right? You would be like, oh, this isn't for me. I shouldn't do this. Like you would start to doubt yourself and everything, right? But you've correctly identified it as like, this is just normal. This is just part of the process. Progress. Like, yeah, yeah, progress. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing with this. It is progress. You should recognize it as progress when you see, when you learned now to see the nuances of like, oh, okay, I can now start to recognize the non-classic presentations of things, right? That it's yeah. like, oh, okay, I, cause I've got, you, you've gotten to the next level, right? It's like in the video game where it's like, you get to the next level. It's never easier. It's always harder, mm -hmm. right? And so it's the same thing with this. Right. Like you graduated from step one to self exams now to step two. This is like the big boss. Yeah. And so you have to interpret that as like, you know, the other side gets paid to play as well. Right. Meaning like they are trying their darndest to confuse you and to make it sort of like challenging for you to get these questions correct. Yeah. 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 And so. That's, that's kind of what it is that I want you to remember with it. So, so the first part of how you solve the problem of being the lawyer and not the judge, right? Or how to become the judge, right? If you're, if you're the lawyer is that you have to just recognize that this is just normal. Like it, it is normal to feel doubt. 
they're not going to give you the cost of presentation of these things. And so, so much of this, just like in sports, right? Like so much of it is the mental game. Like you, you have to have the skills, but so much of it is like learning how to recognize that like this is just like if you're in the championship, it's like the NBA, 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 NBA finals, right? It's like it, it is no, no team like scores 100 points and the other team scores zero. It's like it's close because your, your com- competition is just that good. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing with this. So that's the first thing. It's just mindset and expectation. If you go in with the mindset and expectation that like you're not good enough and that like, you know, it's like, oh, you haven't done a good job of preparation. And it's like, I don't know if I really do belong here. Then when you see that, 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 that doubt that comes from it not being classic, you're going to interpret that the wrong way. You're going to think, oh, okay, there's something wrong with me. Oh, I don't know. This, this can't be right. So you're going to eliminate that answer and you're going to choose something else. So a lot of it is like just mentally getting in the right, like whatever it is that you normally do to get in the right mindset, right? You need to, you need to start changing that mindset. The second part of this is you need to get good at rule in and rule out. So rule in and rule out is what, what happens when you're the lawyer, if you, if you think about it from a rule in and rule out standpoint, is, is that you're going to rule in the wrong answer and you're ruling out the right answer. Right. Right. So let's use this as an example. So you were like, you were like, this can't be cholesterol emboli syndrome because there's just too many, too many things going on. They've they've hit too many organs, right? So you ruled it out. You didn't rule it in. You ruled it out. And then you were probably like, for systemic necrotizing and vasculitis, you probably were like, well, I know that that can be pretty bad and it can affect a lot of organs. So in other words, you ruled it in, but you didn't think about like the things that argue against it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. And especially when I'm pressed for time, I do that even more horribly. I do that even like not like not that re- like I want it to be second. Oh, what is that word? Like second habit, like a, like I want it to be quick. I want that rule in rule out. Like I want the severity, like the severity contest chronology. I do good. And the sentimental question, I do good because I've practiced it a lot. But the rule in rule out, I haven't practiced it that much. Doing it on NBME. I don't do it for every question. I just don't. So I. So, so you, you know, so you know your issue. So you know the solution, right? The solution is you just got to get good at that. It's just getting good at anything. It just requires you to recognize like, what's that one specific skill? What was the other sport that you said you played before? Volleyball. But it's like, I would imagine in volleyball, it's kind of the same thing where it's like, you know, it's like th- there are certain particular skills. And I may have even said this in the consultation. Like there's, there's certain things where it's like, you don't just play games the entire time, like matches the entire time. It's like, you're like, okay, like maybe I suck at setting. Maybe I suck at like, I don't know, whatever. I, yeah, like, but you period. have to find different parts to contribute to an overall good player. Like that's, yeah, that's exactly what. And and so I have what slowly mastering chronologically, like how to put in chronological order, slowly mastering that, like took my ease t- tenfold, just mastering putting it in chronological order. I was like, oh my God, like I get goosebumps because I'm like, guys, you got to put it in chronological order because it made, it was so much easier. It was like, how did I not understand? Duh, it has to be this. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. just that. So okay. I slowly see the building to an overall better learning yes. experience, right? But, right. So now I think I meant that, okay, now what's next is rule and rule out. What's next is yeah. teaming yeah. out that. Doing that game work. Right. Everything that you did up until this point, you have to now do for rule in and rule out and the mindset, right? And so rule in and rule out is just as we wrap up. So for rule in and rule out, the and we'll, we'll talk about this more in your next question, but it's 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 great for people at your level because a if you're the lawyer and you're not the judge, that is the direct solution to that problem, right? If you were being the lawyer and not the judge, then that's exactly what it is you need to do is because you're, you're ruling in the wrong answer and you're ruling out the right answer. Right. Right. And so really what you need to do is, right, is in addition to working on the mindset and the expectation is you have to do rule in and rule out for both of those answers. Because if you do that, then it's like, okay, well, the rule in for this is, is like, okay, uh, you know, he's got like problems with his aorta and it did happen like pretty 
pretty soon afterwards. And like all these things happen. So it's like all these things would make sense. And I know that at a minimum, it can affect the skin and the kidneys. And I don't know about mm -hmm. these other organs, but like, you know, it is so like that would that's the rule. And the rule out is, is that it seems like maybe a little bit too much stuff. Right. right. So it's like perfect. Right. So it's like it's not it's not a slam dunk, which is why you need to rule in and rule out the other one. So like, well, the rule in for, you know, systemic necrotizing vasculitis is that I know for a fact that this can affect lots and lots of organs. The rule out is that it's not really like it'd be really strange for chronologically. It's all would it to happen within like a very short period of time. It would be, yeah. I, I even thought that. I'm like, this this is like a gradual chronic. Patients have other conditions that contribute, but I'm like, whatever. It move on. Exactly. Like I my rule rule out game was very weak. So I was exactly. yeah. Exactly. And so that's just that's the thing you gotta work on, right? So so then you gotta look at those two things and be like, so but again, neither of these situations is perfect. You're like, well, it's, but like one of them is definitely less bad or one is definitely better than the other. And so this is true in clinical medicine as well, because like the patients don't read the textbooks, right? And so like they don't, they're not going to present classically in the vast majority of cases. And so that's like, that's like the final stage, right? But for this, you have to work on, on that particular skill. And so th that's like the two things. So before next time, what I want you to do is just practice this to do a lot of questions because you're gonna have to you're gonna you're gonna work on this skill doing questions, not in doing review. Doing the quick start onboarding, like should I con continue mastering those subtopics just with questions and I wouldn't. So what I would do you can you can you can learn you can't learn everything because you've only got a few weeks, but mm -hmm. you can learn anything. And so I would now not do cardio. I would now find the subjects that you're weakest on. Because let's say you've got 14 days. Let's say that in 14 days, you could, you could make your 10 weakest subjects, your 10 strongest subjects, okay. right? Each time you do that, you might add a half a point to a point to your score. So yeah. maybe you get like, you know, it's like 10 points extra just from knowledge. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. That's yeah. frankly, that's amazing. So if you can do that, that's exactly what I would try to do. Um, and then, but honestly, the majority of the, the, the improvement and like, you know, why that student went from 225 to 257 in two weeks, it wasn't knowledge. It was interpretation, right? And the main thing that she solved was being the, the lawyer, not the judge. And the main way that she did it was mindset and rule in and rule out. Just like you did with like chronology. Now, if you're, you know, it sounds like you're doing chronology every time, which is I mean, props to you. That's actually one of the hardest things to learn how to do because it, 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 like, it, you don't have to do it every time. And so it's hard to develop that as a habit. So that's really, really promising. If you said that if you're already doing chronology, that's good. So rule in and rule out, kind of same thing. It's, a, it's okay. the exact same thing. You just got to isolate that as a skill, practice it like crazy, and then practice it when you're doing Q-bank questions and then do, you know, NBMEs. And so like, so you're, 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 you're building it in so that it becomes second nature, just like you are making the other things second nature. These mindset and approach techniques can transform your score, but there's one missing piece. The student who went from failing to the top 0.5% did more than change her approach. She built a complete study method using a proven framework that virtually guarantees a 260+. Click here to see the study method that achieved her 99th percentile score.